You're listening to the Soul Shape Podcast, where we focus on your spiritual fitness, or what we like to call your energetic self-care. We're sisters and the co-founders of Soul Shape, a quantum wellness app designed to make it easier and accessible to find healing practitioners in the energy healing world and the soon-to-be Soul Gym. We want to have soulful conversations about spirituality and wellness, and whether you are dabbling or taking a deep dive into energy healing, we want to introduce modalities and healing practitioners to you one by one. So it's time to get into Soul Shape. My name is LJ Woodard, and this is my sister, Leslie Bennett. And Leslie, who are we talking with today? I know I say this every episode, but we have another good one today. Um, she's a longtime friend. Um and her name is McColl Noble. And we're going to be talking about what it means to be conscious. Being conscious. This is this is going to be, I agree, it's going to be a good one. And I'm going to tell, I got to first tell the folks, everyone, who is McColl Noble? Well, she is an author. And by the way, here's a little plug for the Queen Bee, the Queen Bee book, um, where she was uh, one of the participating authors, you know, there's great. It's embodying your truth and life fully and life fully expressed. I'll put it in the show notes, but the Queen Bee book. So she's an author. She's also a Chopra coach and mentor and a spiritual retreat curator, plus a life coach who specializes in guiding people to the life they want. And when you visit her website, you got to download her guide to ideal living. It's simple, relatable, and most of all, it's actually a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So um, welcome, McCole. Welcome to the Soul Shape Podcast. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. It's a pleasure to be with you both. Well, let's, should we just dive into conscious being conscious? Yeah, that's a big word, (laughs) Nicole, conscious. And and when we say that, being conscious, or even just the word conscious, what what do you mean when you say that or want to speak about that? Yeah, well, consciousness really is just awareness. And we are the only species that is aware that it is aware. And we sometimes forget that in this fast paced world, everything coming so quickly at us all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And so these practices that we practitioners uh, try to model, you know, most of us are able, well, myself, I should say, uh, most of us are able to model these things that we're sharing with other folks. We, we have to be willing to do the things first that we're asking people to do. So the biggest thing of all the things I've ever taught or coach people around is consciousness, is being versus doing. Mm. And we really have become human doings in this world. And so just feeling really disconnected from our true nature, which is consciousness, is awareness. That's who we are. I would love to stop right there. You have to repeat, wait, okay, human being, we've turned into human doings versus human beings. That's amazing. We've yeah. just forgotten. Are you, are you already at the soulful stretch? <laughs> I'm, have, I'm ha- already having my soulful stretch. I mean, I just- We're only three minutes into the episode and you've got your soulful stretch. Well, I'm Because just- <laughs> conscious, I mean, I mean, being conscious, but I mean- what comes to my brain first always is, you know, more about someone passing out and not being alive or awake and, you know, more like the medical, you know, the definition more of that to me. And so, but, but this seems mm. all the word itself gets to this higher level and it's, Oh, spiritual awakening. And it gets almost too like, I can't speak of it. Like I, and, and intellectually, as you can tell right now, I'm just searching for words, but the way you just said that, mm. I think for me and I hope others out there listening go, oh, well, gosh, well, that just makes sense. I mean, it's so yeah. easy. But well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. <laughs> it is simple. We make it very complicated as human doings, yes. Mm, human so, doings. Yeah. So I, I think of human doings as being on the hamster wheel, right? You know, we're, we've got to go to work. We got to do the laundry. We got to do the pay the bills. We got to do this. And so how do, mm. how do you coach people through that shift? of getting off the doing, you know, hamster wheel to being in that state of awareness. Um, you know, is it hard? You know, what is, is it just like, oh, I'm just going to be aware. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So that's what I mean. It is a practice. So I remember, first of all, I empathize. I remember being there very unconscious. That was actually true. What you said, LJ, about 
most of us are going through life on autopilot, Mm -hmm. somewhat unconscious. And so when we first become aware of that, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that there's another way to be, that's the first step. And then it's a daily practice. So one of the very foundational things through Chopra and I learned through my mentor, even before coming to Chopra, is about meditation and the importance of that connection to self, which is that energetic being that is within all of us. So there's only one way to access that by going within. It's not something we can find out here, Leslie, out on that hamster wheel, all those things that we're sort of chasing, you know, outside of ourselves that we are looking for fulfillment in everything outside of us, but actually everything to fulfill us is within. We just have to practice connecting to it. Mm. So many of us are strangers to ourselves. Mm. And, and, and that idea of going within Mm. goes like, how do I, how do I tap into that? I'm like, aren't I within already? You know, I'm, but I don't know, but yet, So how do how does one get there? Yeah, so both chapters I've written in the two books that are listed, uh, you can buy them both on Amazon. Yeah, give it. <laughs> put in that plug. Uh, put in that plug, Nicole. We want to hear I, it. Well, Please I do. Share. We invite you. Welcome it. Go. Yeah, yeah. I plug both books. <laughs> buy them both <laughs> because they are in somewhat synchronous order of my personal story to everything I just said. I empathize. I remember being there. I had two small kids. I was working full-time as a recruiter, how I know Leslie. Uh, So even though I loved what I did, at the end of the day, there was still an overall feeling or sense that there was something missing or I wasn't fully fulfilled. And then the guilt comes in, right? It's like, I have everything I need. I have a house. I have two healthy children. You know, what is it about me that why am I so demanding? Blah, blah, blah. And so beginning to unravel some of those things, as I said, this takes time. I start, I start, just started this a lot longer than most people. I've just been in this space for, you know, since 2009, I is when I first became a certified life coach uh, through my friend, Cindy, who the queen bee book is a mm-hmm. tribute to. So the story of, you know, sort of how I got here it, it is a process. And so the first thing is to allow a lot of space and grace for ourselves. We're not easy on ourselves. You know, we, we think we change by berating ourselves and beating ourselves into submission. It's actually not how it works. We, we would never say to someone, you know, snap out of it, like just be conscious already. It doesn't work like that. So being easy on ourselves and, 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 loving ourselves enough to become more aware of who we are and knowing ourselves. Meditation really is know thyself. Mm -hmm. It's really what it boils down to. And I think you said it, Leslie, that most of us are really disconnected from who we are, really. Yeah. Something you said also resonated with me um, too, is that, you know, it's a process and and we're so into, you know, instant gratification in today's world, right? We have phones that give us like any answer we want, like right in our hand. Um, so why can't I just fix myself and be well? You know what I mean? And and maybe fix isn't the right word, but that's mm-hmm. kind of what I think a lot of people like, like when I was in grief, you know, why can't I just be over it? And, and mm-hmm. it was a process of, of, discovering and rediscovering and recommunicating with myself. That's a weird word to say, but, you know, getting to know myself. And so I think Mm -hmm. that grace part is something that's not talked about because we're so into, oh, be enlightened, be in spirit, Mm -hmm. you know, and just be, be, be. And it almost feels like it's a do, do, do in that be, be, be. So what what are your (laughs) thoughts on that? Well, I'm laughing. Uh, Deepak likes to say, do, be, do, be, do. (laughs) Oh, does he really? (laughs) Dibby dibby do. <laughs> exactly. So we want to bring a lot of lightness to this if we can, right? And and, and to be easy on ourselves, to, to we take things so seriously. And yes, mm. this is a serious process as you're talking about grief and 
you know, having compassion to really look at our shadow and, and these patterns mm -hmm. that we've just had since we were little, you know, we, we just all carry these things with us. We're conditioned. And so to undo that conditioning, it takes a lot of awareness. It takes a lot of intentionality to change mm -hmm. to, you know, you, you said not to fix, we're actually whole and complete and resilient already. So yes, we've gotten into part of the human, human doing this is that wanting to fix and change ourselves and wanting to mold ourselves into something. And as we said, it's, that's not how change works. It's like alchemy, you know, it's like, it's like when elements blend, you know, there's, there's no beating them up to do that. It's allowing them to sort of meld together and to become something different that takes time. And, and I'm also reminded of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. This is so much of what he teaches yeah. about this, right? That breaking the habit of being ourselves. And, and the first thing is to go within and to be yeah. able to envision, see yourself like you're watching a movie. Like, well, how am I actually being in the world? You know, what, how, what is this human doing? Like just observing ourselves without judgment. Well, and you so, said habit too. It's like, it's not all habits are bad, right? And we kind of, right, you know, right. it's making this new habits or I don't know, like the shift of it all. I, yeah. I think to go within is, is definitely a lot of work because mm. you have so many habits that you have from so many years. And I can't, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm coming to this stage in my life where I'm, I am going within a lot more, but mm. bad habits are hard to break. They really are. <laughs> they can be. And, and that's a belief. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, I don't yeah. 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 And that is also and it's so, yeah. So just even changing that language, I could say yeah. bad habits can be changed. <laughs> what if they were easy? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bad habits like are easy. If we're to, habit, yeah. we're easy. Feel into that. Yeah. What would that experience be like? See, this is what I mean with Dr. Joe. He has us embody that now. What would it feel like if I, if I actually had the mindset, you know, to say that to, to change habits are easy when I put my attention, right? This is just managing. We have intentions for the future. We have our attention on the present moment. It's all there is is mm -hmm. right now. And yet when we're unconscious, when we're in our mind, the mind will go to the past or it will anticipate the future. It is not present. So we just want to be able to observe, notice, right? This isn't about never using our minds again. I mean, our minds are great tools. They're just not who we are. Right. So I need my mind when I lose my keys. Okay. I want my mind to help me figure out where I left them. And it's not who I am. I am so much more than that. I'm actually infinite potential. And the only way to tap into that, into that infinite field, which is who we are, is by going inward. You know, I've heard this phrase a lot. We are so much more. And mm -hmm. and I remember as a kid having that ache. And it's an ache. Like I know there's so much I'm so much more. I know but yet it doesn't feel attainable. It didn't mm -hmm. a child it didn't feel attainable. Today I understand what that was. But but how would you there's a lot of people aching. They know there's so much more. They know there's this, this weird ache. How, mm. how do you address that with your clients? Um, mm. You know, that people that know, but they don't know what that means or what it means to them or for them. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. I, I remember feeling that way most of my life that there was something more mm -hmm. and getting into adulting <laughs> getting married, having kids, you know, all the things that go along with that. Like we said, the, the, the lives we're all leading require a lot of doing this. And so it wasn't until, like I said, I, I would listen on my commute <laughs> to Deepak, the seven spiritual laws over and over again. And we, or it wasn't until I started to unravel and spend time in meditation. Listen, when I first started, I sucked at meditation. I, I'm a recovering type A. Thanks for saying that. Cause it, <laughs> so yeah. this is not to say it's yeah. easy in the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And like everything, the more we practice it, the easier it becomes. Mm -hmm. And so my very first retreat, I got my mantra. I learned to meditate, right? Trying to sit down and meditate on our own is difficult. Or finding a mantra. Finding that meditation (laughs) teacher. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a three-hour workshop that we have around mantra meditation because there is more to meditation than just sitting down and closing our eyes. Okay. So ultimately it's finding what works for you, but we give you lots of guidelines and tell you, you know, what's normal. Cause a lot of people say like, I just, I'm just no good at this. There's, I just can't stop my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that's not what meditation is. If we didn't have thoughts, we'd be flatlining. Mm-hmm. We want to observe the thoughts. We just don't want to react to them or, you know, we don't, I say thoughts are data, not directives. We don't have to respond or react to every single thought we have. We can choose. But without that space, without creating that that practice of having space between our thoughts, the problem is our thoughts, you know, we're having 60 to 80,000 a day on average. (laughs) 80% of those thoughts are the same thought. So you're not even thinking new stuff. (laughs) <laughs> so just to simply sit in meditation and observe your thoughts that's an interesting practice yeah. <laughs> to, we call, it's called the monkey mind right it swings from vine to vine so all of these things are just you know i'm a nerd at the end of the day i love science i love how chopra teachings are integrative medicine this is about science and what has been known for ages coming together so it's not one or the other and so really taking yourself on as your own experiment, being willing to just observe, you know, the highest level of spirituality is being able to observe without judgment. The problem is we judge ourselves for all these things I should intellectually know, and then we get stuck and then we don't change anything. And then we just keep going on, you know, uh, well, I don't need that meditation thing. We're good. I just told Leslie this morning, we were, there's so much like, how do we just take judgment out of everything? All these like thoughts we have and all these ideas or whatever. Can we just just grab it and go like, <laughs> just take it out. I feel like judgment is, um, that's, that's a big one. Well, judgment, the self does not judge. The ego judges. The, the mind judges. So if you find yourself in judgment, you're in your mind, you're in your, you're in your head. And that's so most of us, again, going back to these human doings, this, this isn't about, oh, I have it all figured out and I'm immune now to, (laughs) to my mind. It's, I'm just better at recognizing. I don't spend as much time ruminating and getting stuck in judgment Mm. and shadow work that we do in coaching that it's about that. It's, it's being able to look at where we judge for access to these parts of ourselves that we have just hidden. We don't want people to know that we're jealous and, you know, um, we can be petty or, you know, whatever that is, or perfectionist, right? Like we put on these masks. So it's not about getting rid of the shadow, eradicating the ego. It's not going anywhere. It's actually meant to help us survive. Mm -hmm. We want to thrive. So how can we befriend the ego, (laughs) have it when when it serves us? Because it does at times. As you said, some habits are good. Mm -hmm. They're not all bad. But just seeing it as that, like, oh, look at this thing that's not me at the end of the day. It's I I am self. Self is being. There's a way of being to the self. The essence of the self is peace and calm. Stillness and silence is actually who we are. Really? Yeah. That's not. If you knew LJ, she's a singer. She's a dancer. She dances around the house. No, I work at it. Being my stillness, it, even in acting. I mean, stillness all my is a big thing there, for her. But stillness is that's how the camera sees you. I mean, to be still is actually it's it's not just a practice. Mm-hmm. It's a skill and a talent. But okay. I mean, but whenever I get to that place, that state, and mm-hmm. and then my ego comes in going, oh wow, I'm doing this really well. <laughs> I did it. Okay, stop thinking about that. Oh, did you watch? Did you see that move? Hey, check out this move. I'm so still. But I just... um, Oh, oh, good. Yeah, we have to laugh at ourselves, uh, at the things we do as humans. It's so funny what we do. Oh, for sure. Right? Yes. But we don't. We we 
berate ourselves and beat ourselves up. And we're like you said, that judgment can be really, really damaging. Yeah, get rid of it. Just go away. Well, well, well again, well. that's also thinking mm-hmm. that we can get rid of these things. That's part of then the ego, you keep reacting or defaulting to patterns, old patterns. And then the ego goes, see, we're not, we're never going to change. So let's just go. The ego is strong. It doesn't want to change a thing. (laughs) We got this thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't pay attention over here. Come back (laughs) over here. Right. So it takes a lot of awareness. As I said, a lot of intentionality, a lot of practice, a lot of hours and meditation. And a lot of people say like, I don't have time. I, you know, that's something else we cover in the three-hour workshop around meditation. All of these things are very normal. And I remember being there. Again, I also am a recovering type A. And what I learned is the more I allowed time and space to just be, actually time started, everything started to slow down. I actually had more time. So we're the ones rushing around and creating this, oh, I have running out of time, telling ourselves all these things about time. Hmm, I actually have more time when I do less. Yeah, yeah. I want to That's fascinating. go into this consciousness thing because I, I bought it hook, line, and sinker. Mm. And then I started dating <laughs> again. And I'm like, Oh, I met this guy because I know he's meant to be in my space. And 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 I probably shouldn't have dated him. And that's mm-hmm. the judgment. So I was trying to get out of judgment, just mm-hmm. be in the experience. And I ended up getting ripped off for thousands of dollars from this mm-hmm. guy. So mm-hmm. and and so my question is, because there's a trust component to this, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a a integration, I would say, between the ego and and intuition and being here. Because I was trying not to be in judgment. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, well, how did that happen? And I know how it happened, but <clears throat> maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode. But, you know, it, it's that. So so you can go into, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to allow. And then, and then you get taken advantage of. And so... Um, you know, how, how do you, how do you navigate that? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So, (laughs) well, Leslie, don't date. No. (laughs) Well, that's a lot of your, your intuition. Maybe it wasn't judgment. Maybe it was more, Mm -hmm. you know, the spidey senses. Well, you started with trust and I agree with LJ so much, so much of that is trusting our own intuition, which Mm. that also is a skill. (laughs) Uh, that takes practice. And so, you know, every experience, so I guess what I want to say about that mainly is that this isn't about having a perfect life. This isn't, oh, meditate and be conscious and then suddenly everything's perfect. Perfect. No, (laughs) this is about having tools to navigate life as it comes at us. Yeah. So having that experience, who... You, by you being and allowing, there was some lesson in there that you were meant to get. For I got it. Someone. Yeah, I'm no, there was for sure. There was for sure. And that there, that's yeah. the other part of the story. But I just wondered. She's smiling. That's I know. a good thing. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you know, but. It, didn't, it hasn't taken you out completely. Right? No. That's, well, that's, that's, the, the that's the thing. You know, there was. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. I could have been devastated by it, given the amount of money. Mm. But, um, and, and and, there's other things too, but, you know, I could observe it and I, and I, you know, I understand some of it too, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I obviously don't want to go through that lesson again. (laughs) My checkbook couldn't handle it. What might you do different? Yeah. So, but, but, you know, again, I think it, for me, it was the lesson of, you Mm -hmm. know, that trust between the intuition versus just allowing and being and that, Mm -hmm. you know, I attracted this and I find like, what the hell did I do to attract that? But, you know, I can, I can have reflection on it now and I'm not like, I'm not like devastated by it as you know, cause you know me. She's literally smirking. (laughs) I am. Cause I just smirking, but, but, you know, cause I'm like, Yeah. And there is some self-judgment in there because I should have known Mm -hmm. better, but I also know that 
it was a lesson for me to understand the difference between the intuition, the trusting, and just being like, oh my God, I'm just being, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, I think, you know, we can talk, a, we can talk a good game on being conscious, mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. there's that element that, you know, it's not just singular, you know, mm -hmm. or there's a, you know, we're, we're I'm just being conscious. It's, it, and it, I think it goes back to the awareness part of where we started this conversation 20 minutes or so ago, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm aware that I'm being in this moment, I'm under, I'm, a, I'm understanding all the expressions that are going on in this relationship, and mm -hmm. I can be into whether this is good for myself or not. So that's kind of the, the lessons in that, because it was, you know, you can go too far in one direction and, and, and just get trumpled if that's what you attract. But, you know, and I'm rambling again. So maybe, McColl, maybe you just take it over from there. <laughs> take it away, McColl. You might have. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm listening. There's a lot of goodness in what you just shared. I would invite you to see there is that judgment of yourself. I should have known better. Hmm. I, know, I heard and, that. And because you said there's this judgment, I should. But so when we say but, that cancels everything out that we just said. <laughs> two things can be true at the same time i notice i observe that i'm judging myself for this and there's a lesson here what will i not do the next time what did i learn about listening to myself my gut my instinct we all have this internal compass we just have to connect to it. So part of the seven spiritual laws, there's a law of karma and the law of karma reminds us that we're conscious choice makers mm -hmm. every moment we're choosing. So how do we bring more consciousness to our choices? We pause, we feel into a choice, right? Our bodies will actually give us a signal of either comfort or discomfort as it relates to a choice we'd have to stop long enough to and connect to our bodies enough to know what that is. So as I said, that's also a practice. That's also takes a lot of awareness and willingness to be in our bodies. Part of that unconsciousness is disconnection from spirit, disconnection from our body too. And, and all the things it is telling us the wisdom within all of it. Wow. I could, I could listen to McColl all day. I can talk all day. And you, so. and you have an event coming up, a retreat. Can we share a little bit of information about that? It's, um, what's it? It's about falling in love with yourself. The worth weekend, right? Right. Tell us so about, tell us about that. I know. And by the way, plug mm -hmm. for us, it's on the soul shape app. If you'd like to book your spot yeah. on this retreat. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for posting for me. And yes, so it's a weekend to explore the meaning we give to worth, our own worth, our own value. And women especially, you know, just looking at that, exploring it a bit for how that shows up. What, how is that challenging in our day-to-day -day life? what we believe to be our true work or true value. Where do we give ourselves away? Mm -hmm. So just opportunities to meditate. We're going to do some sound healing, Reiki. Uh, my best friend, one of my best friends, Carol Carmona, she and I are doing this together. She lives in Vegas, which is how we picked that venue. And so it's just going to be an amazing opportunity for those that can't get away for an entire week. You know, I've been told a lot like, oh, yeah, it must be nice to go on retreat for a whole week. Or I went to India for three weeks and people are like, what? Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> so I get, I, you know, that not everyone could do that. So but a we weekend create in Vegas, that could be doable yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, right. Road mm -hmm. trip or whatever. I have somebody flying in. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's going to be amazing. So we're doing a breathwork session on the second day. And really just an opportunity to reconnect, get out of your environment. We, we also want to do this work of exploration and contemplation, hopefully out of our existing environments. It's difficult to, to do what we're talking about, to, to sort of, you know, dive deep into those things, because there's so many things in our day-to-day -day environments that distract us. 
going back to our phones and right yeah. the chores and everything that's sort of staring us in the face. And the power of, of having a retreat to get away mm. a weekend out of your environment, away from, you know, anything, just to focus right. on that yourself. And we also are creating an ongoing community after the weekend. So that's been a big piece too. And thank God for soul gym that's coming for <laughs> to serve the same purpose of yeah. people go away to retreat and then they come back and now what, right? Yeah. I, I want a place where I can just like stop by when I'm feeling it to, to check in with myself, to get some grounding, to reconnect, whatever that looks like for you. So that's also been a, a big request. And so that's something we also are offering is, is a way to, stay connected with these people you're going to come together with at retreat. There's never any accident. People that come together who you meet, you're, you're on this journey together. So why not have that support of each other? Yeah. I always find that fascinating because I have someone who's gone on many retreats in my healing journey. You know, it's always amazing who you get roomed with, who you sit next to. Um, and you just sit there mm -hmm. and, and either you have a lot in combination or there's something that's, reflective in some way to mm -hmm. give you some insight, mm -hmm. a little nugget. So it's always mm -hmm. fascinating. And the other thing I really like about this program that you, that you're putting on this retreat, having that after support, because mm -hmm. just as Laura Jean says, you know, you, you want to change you and you do these great, mm -hmm. you, you know, like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be more me, you know, and then you come home <laughs> And then you're like, you're, you're, you're got this honeymoon effect where you're like, oh, I'm so great. And then, and then like five days later, like, oh. where's McCole? I need McCole. <laughs> exactly. Where's my McCole? Where's my tribe? <laughs> so I think. I've never done drugs. I don't know why I did that. I just, it's just, I'm, what is I have had that? many, having been at Chopra for a decade, I had the privilege to be at many, many events, teaching and attending. And I listen, I'm a transformation junkie. I, you know, I, I go to retreat for that reason because I do feel so much more myself and and get so many insights and feel more enlightened, if you will. And and yet then we do, we come back and and it's we will default to our old ways of being. We it, it, it's human nature. What's the power um, in having a, a, Leslie was talking about you know the sometimes the gift is more about the people you're with there, you know, the person next to you or the roomie, whatever it may be like being with like-minded individuals. I mean, what's yes. the power in that? Well, I talk about this in the queen bee. If you haven't read the chapter is all about the power of retreat. <laughs> and that's one of the things is it's never an accident. The, the, women, the people that come together, as Leslie said, I always found that myself. Some of my best friends to this day, I met on retreat or at some teacher training or, you know, like at all the different journeys, you, you meet so many different people. And it's, I'm always amazed at the people that show up. It's like, wow, I've, I've been asking for these kinds of people. <laughs> and here they Where are. Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been? Hi. Have you been? <laughs> community also is a huge value of mine. So that, you know, that's about creating community. We thank goodness we're all getting back to wanting to be together with people in person. That's something that's been missing. Yeah, and so for if sure. for nothing else, just to get back to being with others and, and hearing yourself in other people, like you said, that like-minded, it reminds us that we're not on this journey alone. Yeah. And that, you know, cause that's a lot of the problem right now, we, right. There's an epidemic of depression, isolation, uh, so many things. So if nothing else, a weekend, if you, if, if you are telling yourself you're not worth a weekend, that's something you may want to spend more time looking at you know, a week, I get it. There's a lot that goes on, especially for people to organize their lives, to get away and all that that takes. But a weekend is doable for most of us. So because there are no accidents, there's someone out there listening right now <laughs> that this right. is no accident. And if I'm talking to you, sign. and if I'm talking to you, as McCall said, this is your sign. And mm -hmm. I would, I would take it because if it's resonating and I've been there where I've listened to something, and I'm like, I've been on a plane that weekend. I'm no, no joke because it just called to me in some way. And, and so if you want to 
be you mm. and love yourself, take this, this workshop. Mm. Give yourself the gift of receiving. The weekend, yeah. worth weekend is about receiving. We are giving, giving mostly to others all the time. Yeah. Owning our worth is about being willing and practicing receiving. Yeah. Most of us are not taught to receive. We're not good at it. Right. It also is something I practice. I have practiced. I've gotten way better at it since I started all this. Yeah. But I was not good at that. That's why that feeling going back to, I don't know that I answered your question before about not feeling fulfilled. You know, I had that feeling as a child and then life yeah. happened yeah. and found myself again in, in my dream job <clears throat> feeling there must be something more. What was that? There's this knowingness. It's not an intellectual knowing. It's a knowingness. Like you yeah. said that in your gnawing. gut. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's a gnawing, right? Yeah. It is an achiness for something. And that's, that's the heart telling us, <laughs> pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. Yep. Wow, Nicole. Well, is it, is it the soulful stretch time? It's time to take a soulful stretch, Ooh. Nicole. And we, I love that. yeah, a soulful stretch. It's so we end mm -hmm. each of our soul shape uh, episodes with a soulful stretch. And a soulful stretch is something mm -hmm. where we've shifted our mind or or gained a new understanding or a takeaway. And it could be something from this conversation or something that's happening in your life that you're working on and you're just, you want to stretch it. And so I'm, I always start and mine is that, and it, thank you for the little coaching session in the middle of this episode. That cool. And, um, and that is that, that wisdom in our choices, right? So, you know, gaining wisdom from my dating life. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of single women uh, you know, uh, who can relate to that, but, you know, taking that wisdom in our choices and, and, and allowing to make good those choices and not just, you know, just kind of be in that, Hmm, what's this guy like, you know? So that's, that's, um, what, what my soulful stretch is, Laura. And I remember I had mine in the very beginning. I was like, Whoa, human doing not human being. But then as we discussed, I, I really loved the reminder about, you know, this is a wonderful reminder. We already know this about being present. So, so many times our decisions come from things that have happened in the past or what we want to plan for the future. But how about for right now, being present? And that's going to be a huge about being conscious for me about being more aware right now. Mm -hmm. And like right now, we are very <laughs> conscious of talking with Nicole here in the studio. I mean, I'm not thinking about anything. I've got my son's coming back for fall break. He's on his way back, you know, and I've got things going on and there's a dog at home that needs to be let out. You know, husband's traveling. There's so many things going on, but literally right now in this moment, it's all about the Soul Shape podcast and learning uh, about how to be conscious, learning how to be conscious and just taking some mm -hmm. wonderful words of, of wisdom from you. And anyone would be very lucky. It'll be a privilege to go mm -hmm. to your worth weekend. So um, I invite mm -hmm. everyone to go onto our, our app and check that out. Do you have a soulful stretch, Nicole, that you want to share maybe? Oh my gosh. I'm so present just to <laughs> what each of you shared. I, it, it, really makes me so happy that each of you got that for yourselves that you you saw those things for yourself and yeah mine is uh, mine is love and not a you know we say giving and receiving love as is as if it's a thing but to be love mm. what is what is it to be love mm. so I'm feeling stretching into that that's a good stretch. Yeah. Mm. That's a really good. I love stretch. that. My heart just expanded a little. Right. I, I can feel that too. I felt it too. In my, I don't know, somewhere I was like, wow. Oh, <laughs> like you. you just personally came we in did. and gave me that little adjust adjustment. So thank that, you. The, lo the love adjustment. Who we are. We are that. So yeah. full so adjustment. That's, that's that resonance that we feel it when, when we hear the truth, we not only hear it in our mind, we feel it in yeah. our whole being. There's a difference. It's a different way of living life when we can. And I, it feels to good it. too. That feels mm. good. Yeah. Thank you both. Well yep. here, um, I just want to say thank you, McColl. 
Thank you, Leslie. And thank you, Signal Fire Media. Um, mm -hmm. And to all of our listeners out there, we appreciate you so. Um, mm -hmm. Here at Soul Shape, we believe that wellness starts within and you can unlock unlimited possibilities with energetic healing. So mm -hmm. um, embrace the woo, dabble, dive, or discover your next healing experience on the Soul Shape app. And we hope you've enjoyed this soulful stretch. And we encourage you to do something to raise your vibration today because the ripple effects are endless. So join us again and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to the Soul Shape podcast. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks, McCall. Thank you, McCall. Okay, we're clear. Thanks. Yep. Hopefully, McCall, you got.